What a great time to be alive. Ideas flying around, real ideas, real policy ideas from the top of our government sprinkling down to the people. Brilliant ideas, free college tuition at city and state universities, and deleting student loans, deleting student debt completely, $1.7 trillion. Take it, throw it in the garbage. That's what one man is talking about today. One Bernie Sanders hit the, hit the, the steps of, of Congress. There he is. He's, on the, uh, he's actually on the House side. I don't know what the hell he's doing on that side. That's the back side of... Uh, but anyway, so, so I guess because of Ilan Omar and all that, whatever, well, just maybe a better view. So one, Bernie Sanders, I'll play the whole thing in its entirety. It's about, it's not 39 minutes, about eight minutes. And Bernie Sanders knocks the skin off the ball. This is, this is ideas, right? If you don't like Bernie Sanders, that's, that's fine. But listen to the, you must love the idea that a, a college, that a college education in this country should be, you know, somewhat of a guarantee, somewhat of a right, right? And not, not exit college $200,000 in debt. It just makes perfect sense. So let's watch. Uh, let's watch the man, the myth, the legend, one Senator Bernie Sanders. I'll come back with commentary at the end. Okay. Uh, thank you all very much for coming out today. You might have to turn it up a little. Uh, I don't often use the phrase, uh, but today we are in fact offering a revolutionary proposal, a proposal that will transform and improve our country in many, many ways. In a highly competitive global economy, when we need the best educated workforce in the world, this proposal will make it possible for every person in America to get all of the education they need, regardless of their financial status. This means not only a college education, but the right to enter a trade school, the right to learn how to become a carpenter or a plumber or a sheet metal worker and get one of the many important jobs that keep our society going. In other words, we will make a full and complete education a human right in America to which all of our people are entitled. This means making public colleges universities and HBCUs tuition-free and debt-free by tripling the work-study program, expanding Pell Grants and other financial incentives. Today, we are entering a proposal which will allow every person in this country to get all of the education that they need to live out their dreams because they are Americans. Further, in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, it is simply not acceptable that our younger generation, through no fault of their own, will have a lower standard of living than their parents, more debt, lower wages, and less likelihood of owning their own homes. That is why this proposal completely eliminates student debt in this country and ends the absurdity of sentencing an entire generation, the millennial generation, to a lifetime of debt for the crime of doing the right thing, and that is going out and getting a higher education. 10 years ago, <clears throat> the United States government bailed out Wall Street after their greed, their recklessness, and their illegal behavior drove us into the worst recession in modern history. Today, the major Wall Street banks are larger than ever, their profits are soaring, and their CEOs receive huge compensation packages. Our proposal, which costs $2.2 trillion over 10 years, will be fully paid for by a tax on Wall Street speculation similar to what exists in dozens of countries around the world. The American people bailed out Wall Street. Now it is time for Wall Street to come to the aid of the middle class of this country. This Wall Street tax will have the added benefit of controlling Wall Street recklessness and reducing the likelihood of another major economic crash. 
In 1944, as World War II was coming to an end, the U.S. government did the right thing and passed the GI Bill, which made higher education free to all of those who served in the armed forces. That act not only improved the financial well-being of millions of men and women, but it also laid the groundwork for a great expansion of the American middle class. In the 1960s and 1970s, the federal government and state governments invested heavily in higher education with the result that college tuition was virtually free, virtually free for millions of young people. Forty years ago, a federal Pell Grant paid for nearly 80 percent of tuition, fees, room and board at a four-year college. Well, unfortunately, things have changed over the years and changed in a bad way. Today, it will cost over $21,000 each and every year to attend some of these very same schools which 50 years ago were virtually free. Today, Pell Grants cover only 30% of college expenses. And here are the results of federal and state higher education cutbacks. Today, the average college senior graduates with about $30,000 in student debt, and one out of six seniors will graduate with over $50,000 in debt. The situation is even worse for African American and Latino families. And at a time when we desperately need more doctors and dentists and nurses, those who are graduating medical school and dental school and nursing school are finding themselves in some cases with three or four hundred thousand dollars in debt. And here is a sad truth, another sad truth regarding this whole crisis. Many students are dropping out of college, not getting their degrees, and yet they still find themselves with tens of thousands of dollars in debt. Let's be clear, the millennial generation was told that the only way they would get the good jobs available is if they received a college education. Unfortunately, that turned out to be bad advice. It was wrong. Since 2000, the cost of attending a public college has nearly doubled. Meanwhile, the bottom 60% of college graduates earn less money than those who graduated college did 19 years ago. And wages for the average college graduate have stagnated. Today, 34% of Americans 25 and older have a college degree, but only 26% of them in our country, 26% of those jobs require a college education. The result is that many millions of young people today are forced to work at low-wage jobs, their standard of living is going down, while they are struggling to pay off their outrageously high level of student debt. Bottom line is, we should not be punishing people for getting a higher education. It is time to hit the reset button. Under the proposal that we introduced today, all student debt would be canceled in six months. By taking this action, by taking this action, we not only provide immediate financial relief to 45 million Americans who have 1.6 trillion in debt, but we will be improving the entire economy. According to a recent study, canceling all student debt would add an estimated $1 trillion to our economy over the next decade and create up to 1.5 million jobs. Let me just conclude by giving you a tale of two crises. Ten years ago, because of their greed and illegal behavior, Wall Street banks were on the verge of collapse and the United States Congress with taxpayer assistance came to their aid. Well, now we got millions and millions of families in this country who are struggling with outrageous levels of student debt. And maybe instead of just worrying about Wall Street, we start worrying about those families and that generation and give them a break. That's right. So this is for those families, this is for those young people, this is for the economy, and this is for justice. And that is what we are proposing. Thank you all very much. Uh, Good morning.
Wow, a great speaker has spoken. Holy shit, man. Right? So fucking... What a great time to be alive, right? Great ideas. Great ideas stemming out the back of Congress instead of a bunch of lies and bullshit. We're hearing actual policy for the people. Oh, so let's break this down just a little bit briefly. So, you know, you, you see in that just the backdrop is wonderful. You got, you got the House and Senate there, 525, 524, how many? There's 425 Congress and 100 senators. If you can get a bully, if you can get a president like Sanders in there with that voice, with that message for the people, now people say, oh, well, Bernie Sanders wasn't talking about that the last time. Well, it's called evolution. It's called uh, listening to the people and, and evolving into what the people want. And people have spoken. And uh, college tuition stimulating, stimulating young people uh, taking the debt off their back and, and allowing them to enter the job market not in debt, maybe buy a house someday, right? In, in conjunction with other economic stimuluses uh, is a wonderful idea. Why, why, would you, why, would you not, why would you not want that? Why would you want to turn uh, um, people seeking an education into uh, you know, uh, uh, debtors for life? Uh, just, I don't know. It doesn't make sense, right? So... Human, so education has a human right. That's pretty bold. I don't know. Is it a human right? Maybe. I don't know. That's, that's pretty cool. Public college. So he's, he's, impo- he's, he's proposing public, co- public college at, at uh, city and, um, you know, city and state universities, tuition and debt free. He talks about the Pell Grants, right? Where Pell Grants used to pay 80% of, the, of, of your uh, education which is a grant, the Pell Grant. By grant, by definition, is a gift. You don't pay those back. That's not a loan. And now where, 80, where your tuition, where your expenses would have been paid 80%, they're now paid 30%. So the, the continuation of a grant is, is interesting too because not only are we making college tuition free, but we're also actually paying, like in Scandinavia, we're actually paying people. When you give someone a grant, that's, that's, that's free money. You don't have to pay that back. So your tuition is covered, and then living expenses could be covered also as well. If you're going to guarantee it, right, guarantee um, debt-free, then you would have to have at least housing. and So very interesting, very interesting stuff. Uh, to, to, I, here's the part that I don't like is, is putting it on Wall Street. Like, it's your fault, right? It's... I, I don't like that that strategy. I don't have a problem with with um, you, you know creating a speculation tax. Every trade in, every trade out on Wall Street uh, gets gets a little tax, maybe two per, two cents, one cent, right? It adds up because they go in and out all day long, right? So you could he did say that you can actually um, he proposed that you could actually decrease the the amount of excessive uh, speculation on Wall Street with that tax because it causes them to go in and out a, a lot less, right? And that's how they make their money. They, they're trading, they're driving the price up and down all day long, like a like a like a pogo stick. Right? So, so it is a good idea, but th- I, I think there's a, there, there will be available funds to 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 pick this up because again, you're you're stimulating the economy rather than people paying off debt into a black hole. They're actually spending the money. They're stimulating the economy. The velocity of money increases when poor people spend their money. The velocity of money moving through the economy increases. So these are these are all uh, real. These are all uh, big pluses. The the biggest the thing the takeaway that I it just dawned on me while I was watching it for maybe the second or third time is is he talked about the GI Bill. Listen to this, right? The GI Bill gives college tuition free for four years of service. Now. You can get four years of college for free without doing the service. Isn't that wonderful? What, do you, what does that say to the, the military-industrial complex when they come at Bernie Sanders over this policy? Know that it's not about educating the populace, but it's keeping people stupid and poor and reaching for that education, even putting their lives on the line to go fight a stupid resurgency war that has nothing to do with security at home. So... It, it actually, this policy actually works to, to, uh, to deflate the military-industrial complex by not having a steady pool of poor people looking to join just to get a college education out of the deal. So you may even see a, a um, 
you may even see a decrease in, in military enlistment. Wow, what a great idea. A great idea. Oh, no, it could never happen in America. No, America, it's too greedy. It's, the system is too broken. Everything is corrupt. It's so bad. But it, again, if it, the people, the, the government is the people. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to not see it. The government, we are the people, though the government has a stranglehold on the current system. But if there's a tsunami of people that surround the White House, I, re- I remember it was with um, with Nixon and, um, and McNamara. They were locked inside the White House during one of these Vietnam protests, right? And and uh, Nixon turns to McNamara and he says. He says, he says, Bob, they're gonna, they're gonna come in. They're gonna, they're gonna knock the barricades down. They're gonna come in here and get us. Ah, see, that's where you want your politicians. You want your politicians nervous. You want your politicians scared of the people. The people are in charge, but they respond to the people rather because it's easy to just, you know, look out the back door and take them, take the donor money. So, these are great ideas. I right? was, was, you know, uh, Trump, one-term president. Let's go. Let's go up and you can't. You sat on the ball. We gave you your four years, wrecking ball, Mister Lock em Up, Mister Drain the Swamp, Mister Build the Wall. All right, come on, let's go, let's go, Chucky. It's time to go, man. Time to go. One term president. Let's get a uh, let's get a Bernie Sanders in there as a uh, as a uh, as a candidate. We've got to overcome the margin of cheating. I don't discount the margin of cheating. I know the Democrats are gonna. You know, they're going to take that corporate money and they're going to blame Sanders for everything. He's a socialist. He's a communist. He has Russian ties. He had his, his, his wife and his wife is a fraud and a fake. And then he, he took the money. Hillary Clinton fucked his ass. I, I know the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole loop. But the, the thing about it is, you know, and it also occurs to me that maybe it was a good thing that Sanders lost the first time. Maybe, maybe it was a good thing that Sanders, uh, how many people would get cheated like that and come back and 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 try again? How many how many people you know would would most people that I know and most people that that I followed uh, that were my heroes in this storytelling have all become bitter and old and and went away. They disappeared. They drove themselves crazy. But Sanders is still there fighting. Maybe he knows something we don't know. Maybe he, you know, maybe he has he has a, a very unique vision uh and uh is really the the fighter that we need and because he lost right so what so now he's still here he's still voicing these ideas still voicing the ideas now my i know i know people say they look and say conti what happened to you you've moved so far to the left you're 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 blinded by socialists you're, you're god damn you're a commie you've become a commie <laughs> so you say right i don't know it's about it's about it's like it's like in the music industry, right? You hear, you know, there's music, right? Like I remember, and I remember as a, and I'll I'll end on this. As a kid, right? You I would listen to classic rock, and I would listen to Pink Floyd, and I would listen to Led Zeppelin, and, and the Who, and all my heroes, Queen. Oh, fucking great music, you know, great music out of the uh, '70s that evolved from the '60s, you know, and this this sound of classic rock was. Uh, so larger than life. And then all of a sudden, one day, you're sitting, I was sitting there listening to Pink Floyd, right? And and I hear this song by the Ramones. Right? I'm like, what is that? What is that? I right? and all and and suddenly in hearing the Ramones for the first time, immediately 70% of my albums were obsolete. Like I, I it's just it's just a a profound thing happens, and it's just like that. Pow! It, it's like a light switch goes off, right? And that's that's all I'm saying. Is not it's not that it's not that I I am a I, I see America as a as a cesspool and a shithole. I see it as as something that has room for growth. And 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 a, an idea man like Sanders coming along is, in my view, the Ramones. It's it's you too coming along and or it's it's the end of that era the end of the 80s remember when the, when the cars and and all the you know the you know poison and motley crew and all the the glam bands of the 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 new wave bands of the 80s and all of a sudden the same thing happened again 
and it was Nirvana. All of a sudden, it's just fucking, what is that? You know, it was like, you, and suddenly you couldn't hear, you couldn't hear music the same anymore after that moment. And all of your, 70% of your, your listening becomes obsolete. So well, that's all I'm saying. It is, it is evol- evolution of thought. It's not to say that, that the Ramones and Nirvana and, and, uh, you know, and Bernie Sanders are, are, are immortal, are saviors of some sort. It's just that they're, they're at, the mo- at the moment. They are at the arrowhead of a movement. Right? And to, to deny that or to, to refuse to accept it, to refuse to internalize it because of a, uh, you know, some past performance, some, some uh, you know, just devastating cheating that went on in 2016, uh, you know, and his faults, of course. He, he, he sided with the Russia stuff and all that. Right? But whatever, whatever the reason is, the ideas are still out there. Today, today, the idea of a free college tuition, a free college education in America, debt free, and if you've if you've if you got suckered into thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, that today that that uh, that debt would will be deleted, right, and you'll be free of that debt. Now that's a powerful that's a powerful movement, man. Marcus Conte reporting.